Okay. So let's start on the bottom of the Nalaf. Shalach Rakuna Barav. See that? The crowd tonight. I see him tonight. My Shachayim Gintan made the same thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, it goes like this. Shalach Rav Huna Bar Oven. It's the second to the bottom line. Rav Huna Bar Oven sent to the yeshiva. Doesn't say we are. Um, he sent the following halacha. It says, Hamaycher Sadol Yishtay. If someone sells his own wife a field, he's doing business with his wife. Someone sells his own wife. Oh, yeah. 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 Telling, they're telling me. Yeah. Be careful where I put the comma there. If someone sells his own wife. If someone sells a field to his wife. Uh, to his wife. Um, she she acquires it, and turn the page. and the husband can eat the. The uh, the the usufruct is the he, he has the uh, the the benefits of that of that property even though he just sold it to his wife, but he still uses he still is able to get the um, income that comes from that, that property, the fruits. Well, the Rashbam points out that look if his wife would have inherited a property from her own family, so the husband would be allowed to eat the fruits. So she got it from him. So if he's allowed to eat the fruits, yes. so if, it, if it came from him or if it came from someone else, but he's the husband, he gets to eat the fruits. Ram, however, Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Vo, Vachol Gedele Adar Amru, Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Vo, and all the great people of the generation, they say differently. Bye. That's really, he didn't sell it to his wife. He really was giving his wife a gift. Oh. Now, the problem is he made it as a, as a sale. Why do you write it as a sale if he really was giving her a gift? Because he wanted to increase her strength in the field, which means that she should be able to come back to him to get any, um, to, uh, to have a warranty. If anything should happen to it, it's considered like a sale. She could come back and get the get the uh, money as if there was money that was given. So really, he gave it to her as a gift. Now, what happens when he gives it to her as a gift is that he does not eat the fruits because the rule is that someone that gives a gift is ga'ayin yafa, gives it with very with a generous eye. And the Rashbam had an interesting expression over here. However, if he sells it to his friend, it's not, he doesn't give it with a generous eye. He says. He doesn't, he doesn't love him that much. Well, here it would be, he doesn't love her. He doesn't love her that much if it would be if it would be a sale. So the say these great people of the generation say that it was really it was really a gift. He just strengthened it more than a gift by saying that it's a sale. Okay, now the difference is it's the husband allowed to uh, get the income from that property after he's given it to her or sold it to her. The person on the deathbed, the low thing, which we learned once before, and breathing and things, wasn't the strongest thing when he gave a gift before he died that was uh, bothered that of all that right. stronger than the sale that someone can come back to and say, I thought uh, maybe, maybe, that but there is a benefit to a sale. There's, there's benefits to gift and there's benefits to a sale. There's, there's a certain strength to the sale is that. If someone shows up and says that uh, I owe money and I'm a creditor, takes it away so they can go back to the husband, uh, to the original owner, and get the get their get their money, to get the value of it. So there's a benefit. He may say the Gemara is a question. Love him and avid v'shichra. If someone borrows money from his own non-Jewish slave, and then he frees the slave, menaisha v'gersha. He borrows money from his own wife. And then he divorces her. He doesn't have to pay them back. Now, the explanation we said before, 
my time, what's the reason? It's because he was just trying to find out if they had money that they hid away. So he made it, he made up this, uh, this, um, scheme, fake sale, to see it, to see if they're hiding money. We're saying that if someone sells something to his wife, she acquires it, he eats the fruits. Problem is, we have a uh, Bryce that says, someone says, sell something to his wife. There's no sale at all. It's just the Gluye Zuzi who the boy is just trying to see where she keeps the money. When he answers, Shani Hossam, that case is different. You have to realize that when we're talking about an actual sale, that's a different story. When did we say he's trying to find the money? That's when he was lending money. That's when he was borrowing money from her because he would never want to be indebted to his wife. Um, to be an avid laborish malva, be a slave to his wife, seeing that she's, she would be the creditor. Shani Hassan by Lishvi and she avid laborish malva. Okay, I'm a Rav. Rav says a meicha sadul yishtei. Someone sells field to his wife, Kansa. Wife acquires the field, like we said before. The wife acquires acquires the field, and Rabal echol peiros, and the husband. Gets to eat the fruits. Why does the husband eat the fruits? Because he always eats the fruits of her property. He always gets the income of her property. And instead of selling it to his wife, he gifted it to his wife. Comes so she acquires it. But he doesn't get to eat the fruits. Why? He said that if someone is giving a gift, then he's giving it by an yafa with a generous way. And he's... Um, Giving it a hundred percent, he's not even uh, keeping the fruits for himself. Now there was an interesting point that the bottom of the Taisus, the Matana Kansa Vena Balechol Peres. Uh, this is yeah. Sorry, the the, the thesis says that the husband doesn't eat the fruits of the property, but the fruits of the fruits he will eat. In other words, what we're doing is we're considering the fruits to be the 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 karen, to be the principal, because he's giving it with such a strong way that the principal is considered given and the the, the profit is considered the principal, which is given as well. What about the profit that comes from the profits? So in other words, if you take those fruits, buy a property, and from that property, you get income. That would be the payers of the Nechzei Malot. That would be payers of her property, which the husband would eat. So it's only the first step that the husband doesn't, that the husband get, that the husband doesn't get over here when he gifts it. He gifts it to her, so it, it goes to her entirely, but it's not really entirely. There still is one step that if it, if they end up buying fruits, they end up buying land with the fruits, he would end up he would end up getting the fruits of the land that was brought with the fruits. Okay, uh, that was the opinion of Rab. Rabbi Lazar Rab says. That whether it's a sale or whether it's a gift, the wife acquires the property, but the husband does not eat the fruit. So even if it's a sale, the husband doesn't eat the fruit. Avid Rav Chizda of the Karabalaza. Rav Chizda, he paskined in an actual story, like Rabalaza, that he did not give the husband the fruits of the say of the property that was sold to his wife. Amali Rav Ukva, Rav Nechemia Bnei Brate. The Rav Chista, it says, Nebrate, the Rav Chista, the Rav Chista. Rav Chista's grandchildren, the, the two sons of his, Rav Chista's daughter, they say to Rav Chista, Shavak Mar Rapperve Vavit Kazutri, why is the master, why is uh, Zaidi, why is the uh, Rav Chista paskening like? Uh, Rabbi Lazar versus Rav. Rav is greater than Rabbi Lazar. Why is, why is he forsaking the great one and he's passing like the lower one? Rashbam says that if Rabbi Lazar is a student of Rabbi Yechman, 
Yochanan felt that Rav was the greatest person of the generation because he would send him uh, messages to Babel and he would say, um, uh, he would address it to the master in Babel, Rabbeinu Sheba Babel. He would, that's how he would address it. So obviously, if Rabbi Yochanan considers Rav the great one and Rabbi Yochanan is greater than Rabbi Lazar, so for sure, Rav, Rav is greater than Rabbi Lazar. And an interesting point over here, um, he told right, uh, that Rabbi Yechanan asked, uh, Rabbi Yechanan uh, he responded to Rish Lakish that asked, Who's this Rav that you keep talking about? He says, Oh, well, you're we talking about Rav. He would sit down in front of Rabbi, I would have to stand in front of Rabbi because the Rav is greater than Rabbi Yechanan. Then he brings another point that Rav said. That the reason why I'm greater than my friends is because I saw the back of Reb Meir. Now we heard, we always heard this Gemara that it's not Rab, it's Rebbe. Rebbe, Rebbe said that he was greater than his friends because he saw the back. He saw he saw the back of Reb Meir, not Rab. But anyway, the gear said that Rosh has is that it was Rab, which is very interesting. There is a Rabbeinu Gershon here that has a, a really good point. He says that Rabbi Lazar himself is a student of Rav. Before Rabbi Lazar moved to Babel, he went by Rav. So where we're at, they're asking Rav Fizda, why are you passing like the student, not like the teacher? Like the uh, the great one. Amar you know, the, there's a, the, they could have, you could answer back. Let's say the halacha kebasroi, we pass him like the later one. And he's later. But the way this, the uh, commentaries uh, view that contradiction, whenever there's a mahlaikas, a teacher and a student, the Allah is like the teacher. Whenever there's a mahlaikas earlier and later, the Allah is like the later. Second, how does that work? The teacher is always before the student. It's a contradiction. But they answer, they, oh, they answer it that it depends on which generation. From Abai and Rava and An, we pass them like the student. Before Abai and Rabbi, we always pass him like the teacher. That's the that's the way I, I saw the commentary say that. Not, not over here, but not. Here. Okay. Why is that? Because the tradition was stronger before Abai and Rabbi, so you would pass him like the teacher. But the logic uh, after Abai and Rabbi, that's my understanding of it. The logic after Abai and Rabbi would be stronger afterwards because they are analyzed what the first one said. So before and by, by and Rabbi, they're looking at tradition. After by and Rabbi, they're looking at the analyzation. Uh, that's my uh, twist. That's my. I don't know. Not too many people. No, no, it's not. But but Rabbi, yeah, but in, in including a by and Rabbi. Uh, Amale, Amale, sir, of his, responds back. Bananamika, uh, it's ban. Uh, what is how do they adjust this? He dropped the boat. Ananami. I'm also passing like a great person. I'm Rabbi Yechanan. When Robin came, he said the name of Rabbi Yechanan. I'm going like Rabbi Yechanan. So whether it was a sale or whether it was a gift, the woman acquires it and the husband does not eat the fruits. That's why I like Rabbi Gershon's shot better than the Rashbam's is because the Rashbam's shot was that if Rav is greater than Rabbi Yechanan, and Rabbi Yechon is a teacher of Rabbi Lazar, then why do you pass him like Rabbi Lazar? You should pass him like Rav. So he answers, no, I'm not passing like Rav, I'm passing like Rabbi Yechon. But Rav was greater than Rabbi Yechon. He didn't, he didn't uh, answer the question. So if you learn like Rabbi Nagershon, that Rabbi Lazar was a student of Rav, so why are you passing him like, like Rabbi Lazar? You should pass him like his teacher, Rav. He says, no, I'm passing him like his other teacher, Rabbi Yechon. That would be easier to explain. Because so, Rabbi Lazar ben Pidas. You're going to see him in uh, under a page in Eretz Yisrael. It should be a big letter. Rabbi Lazar ben Pidas. Okay, Amar Rava. Rava says, "Hilchas da'alachas hamechus sadul yistay like kansa." Someone sells a field to his wife. She does not acquire it. She herself doesn't acquire it. Why would she not acquire it? Because he's trying to see if she has money. It wasn't a real sale. He was just trying. He's trying to figure out where she is hiding it. 
And the husband eats the fruits. Now the Gemara is going to ask in a moment, but that doesn't make sense. So, but one second. The matana, if he gives it to her as a gift, once she acquires it, and the husband doesn't eat the fruits. So that means a gift is 100%. The Gemara asks the question, Arti, how do you get away with saying that the wife doesn't acquire it, but the husband eats the, eats the fruit? You only say the husband eats the fruits when the wife acquires it. If the wife doesn't acquire it, then what do you mean the husband eats the fruits? It's the whole thing is the husband. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It's like a, a square circle. It's impossible. That's not how it works. Mar says, like Kasha, it's not a question. What we need to do is we need to divide up that statement into two, two different uh, scenarios. Khan the Mayist Munim. Where do we say the wife doesn't acquire it? That's when the wife has hidden money. And the husband is trying to find out uh, where the money is hidden. She has it in Swiss, Swiss accounts. So uh, he's trying to figure out the, where it is. So he says, I'm going to sell this to you. So she pulls up her uh, bank, bank account. Ah, that's, uh, okay, that's the bank number. Okay. Figures out uh, where she's hiding the money. And Khan, where do we say that the husband eats the fruits? That's the Shane Tmunim. That's where she doesn't have hidden money. The husband doesn't need to find where the money is hidden. So then we say that's a valid sale. The husband eats the fruits. I'm Rabbi Huda because Rabbi Huda said, It makes a difference if, there, if the wife has hidden money. Then um, if she does have hidden money, then it would not be a valid tale. He's just trying to see where the money is hidden. And if there is hidden money, if there's no hidden money, then we'd say it's a valid sale. Okay, let's leave it over here. So the difference here is whether it's a... Uh... The difference here is whether it's a sale or matana. The big if difference it's a, is if it's a matana, then she can produce, they can produce a star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even by the sale, there's a star. Right, but it's anyway, questionable. We're right? saying, that, nevertheless, if there was hidden money, he was only doing this just to find out where it was. Yeah, but if it's a matana, there's not, the issue isn't there. If there's a matana, then, right, there's no money. He's not going to see any money from it. Yeah. So I got to tell you how honest my wife is. Yeah, my wife <laughs> has but she always gives it to me to put it in, in her envelope where she hides the cash for me to go hide it. <laughs>